Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, August 30th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Boyan today wrote up a little test he did and that was setting up a new website and registering a TLS certificate for it and then waiting how long it takes for the website to be actually scanned. Well, it turns out it only took seconds. The culprit here is likely certificate transparency. Now, to make it clear, certificate transparency is a good thing. It forces certificate authorities to publish certificates that they issue, which you then can search to, for example, identify certificates that someone may have uh, retrieved for your domain without authorization. All public certificate authorities that are part of the trusted certificate authority ecosystem have to publish uh, these certificate transparency logs, and that uh, basically ensures that they all sort of play by the same rules. But with these logs being public and relatively easy to monitor, it's uh, no surprise that various more or less bad guys, some of them are sort of in our research category, are scanning any new website as it's being deployed. So your survival time here is really only a few seconds, which of course is important because often websites are being made live before the security configuration of the site is completed. So this is a good reminder. Make sure that anything that you are making live is uh, completely secure. So don't wait uh, until later. Uh, As far as certificates go, what I usually recommend is if you have internal websites, like development websites and such, It may just be not just simpler, but also safer to use an internal certificate authority for these sites. Of course, that only works if only a limited audience needs to reach the site and for development and internal sites. It may be better to have an internal certificate authority. And of course, internal certificate authorities don't have to play by these rules and do not have to publish certificate transparency logs. And we have a blog post by the Japanese cert that I must admit I didn't really take quite serious yesterday. And uh, well, uh, today I looked at it again after uh, one listener sort of uh, pointed me to it. And uh, Didier also published a blog post about this. What's happening here is that we have Word documents that are embedded in PDFs. And initially, that's why I thought it wasn't really anything new and exciting because we had sort of Word documents embedded in PDFs before. But what's sort of a little bit different here is that the Word document is essentially just being appended to the PDFs. And then you have sort of this polyglot file issue where a file is recognized as different types depending on how you open a file. And these files open just fine in Word even though due to the uh, initial uh, PDF content, they look like PDFs uh, to many tools that will inspect the file type, like, uh, for example, your Mime Magic library. These documents are currently being used uh, in attacks, according to the Japanese CERT. More uh, details about these you can find in the Japanese CERT's uh, blog post. And DDA also came up with a pretty interesting, I must say, a pretty uh, difficult uh, JARA rule in order to recognize uh, these documents. The problem here is that your typical and a malware may just uh, recognize the PDF part and treat them as PDFs and not necessarily look for any malicious uh, Word content. Juniper Threat Labs is reporting that they're seeing exploitation against CVE 2023-33246. This is a vulnerability affecting Rocket MQ servers that was originally disclosed and patched in May of this year. Exploitation, according to Juniper, started in June. They're now releasing some of the details that they're seeing, including some of the exploits and details about how to exploit this vulnerability. Virus total recognition of some of the initial downloader bash scripts is uh, not there at this point. And uh, often, of course, these bash scripts are not recognized. 
Doesn't look like we have sort of very sophisticated hacks here. Uh, these are pretty much Monero crypto miners, according to Juniper. What this tells me is that before June, we sort of had the earlier waves of more sophisticated attacks. And then because we have seen a lot of exploitation against uh, the software in the past, uh, Soho Manage Engine published a patch. Now this one does just allow bypassing a two-factor authentication. In the past, of course, we had sort of some uh, remote code execution vulnerabilities here, but still, given the criticality of the system, multi-factor authentication is a must, and being able to bypass it could uh, certainly leave some organizations vulnerable. Well, that's it for today. Remember, Monday next week, uh, there will be uh, my presentation in uh, London. If you are happening to be in London, I'll be talking about the Internet Storm Center. Well, uh, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.